Okay, let's talk about the MTEL, Elementary Education Math Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I'll assume that you are preparing for this particular assessment, which is outstanding. And I'm also assuming that you uh, um, are looking to become an elementary education teacher in the great state of Massachusetts. So um, if that is your case, then I think you'll be interested in this particular uh, problem that I'm going to do. But before going any further, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math, um, and also I'm a middle and high school math teacher. But my Tabla Class Math program I've created over many, 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 many years, well over uh, a decade, and I've developed um, a lot of different online courses. So people take my courses uh, for to prepare for tests, to, to do full online um, complete education. I also work with schools. I do a lot of different things, but um, I actually happen to have a full MTEL elementary education math assessment prep course. I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video if that's something that uh, you think you want to check out. But what I have here is kind of a, a problem I would like to review with you. It's kind of more like a pop quiz, but I want to speak a little bit more what's on uh, this particular assessment. So the first thing is if you notice in this uh, the title here, we're talking about elementary education. So at first glance, someone might say, well, if I just know how to do my times table and I understand prime and composite numbers and fractions and all that kind of basic good stuff that, you know, um, that would be you know, sufficient, like place value and all that stuff, decimals. Yes, all that's important for sure. However, there is a considerable amount of high school level algebra and geometry that's on this assessment. So if you haven't really taken a look at what is on here, I would definitely encourage you to take a look at uh, uh, the type of math that you're going to be facing. So again, I would kind of characterize it as high school level algebra, geometry, and some other kind of stuff. So you're going to have to really put some uh, serious effort into brushing up your math skills to uh, be confident on on uh, this particular assessment. But with that being said, what I have here is a problem you should be able to handle for sure to do, if you expect to do well on the MTL elementary education math assessment. So I'm going to give you a chance to solve it and then of course I'm going to go through it. So again this is just kind of a quick spot check on one particular skill uh, pop quiz but let's have fun with it. Okay so let me explain the problem to you and then let's see if you can do it. Alright so here I have an equation of a line okay and I want to know if this point is on that line. So I have a point. Now I'm going to explain this more here in a second, but I don't want to give you too many clues. So I have a point and I have an equation of a line. So my question is, is this point on this line? Okay. So kind of leave that there for a second. So hopefully a lot of you are going, okay, I understand the nature of the question. And if you know how to solve it, I would encourage you to pause the video and solve it. Of course, I'm going to go through it and let's go through it now. Okay, so of course the answer here is either going to be yes or no, correct? Well, it's either this point's either on this line or it's not. But let's let's look at this problem visually, and then we'll uh, look at it algebraically. Okay, let me just kind of sketch this out and clarify. We you know uh, what we're talking about here. So I said this is a line, but really what we're talking about this is what we call a linear equation. So it's an equation, if you, if you just kind of listen to that, a linear equation. Linear equation means equation of a line. So lines, typically we like to write in y equals mx plus b format. Now, if what I'm talking about here, if you're kind of lost, you know, then that's a you know, strong flag, red flag, that you got a lot to learn, you know, to, to prep for this exam. If you kind of vaguely kind of understand what I'm saying, you're like, oh, I kind of remember that from my high school math or college you know, one of your, your classes, and that's good as well. But the, the main idea here is if you kind of hmm, somewhat know what I'm talking about, that's not good enough either. You're really going to have to know this you know, very, very well, along with several other uh, math topics. So again, you know, we're talking about a professional certification ex uh, exam here. You know, you have to really study for these assessments. Okay, I'll talk more about that later. So, um, yes, there is a decent amount of math for sure that's on these assessments. But let's continue back with the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this line. Now, we can kind of turn this into the second question here uh, in this problem. If you think you can graph this line, I would encourage you to just 
quickly sketch it out and graph it on, you know, just draw a little XY plane like I did, and then graph it out, and then I'm going to plot this 0.17. So I'm going to go and do this now. So I'm going to start at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't want to turn this lesson into a complete, you know, um, you know, full lessons on graphing lines and all this other stuff. So I'm going to be skipping some things here. So I'm just graphing this line. So I'm going to start here at negative 5, which is the y-intercept. And then I'm going to go up 3 and over 1. I'm using the slope here. So 1, 2, 3, over 1. So that's the second point. So these two points are on this line. And now I'm just going to hopefully do a pretty good little sketch through those two points. Okay, so this is a rough sketch of the line of this linear equation, y equals 3x minus 5. Okay, so this is the graphical representation of this linear equation. So the the question I had, the original question, is the point 0.17 uh, on this line. Now you, we can just take a look at this point and graph it. Now these points in algebra, uh, they they go by different names. Okay, so point or coordinate. Okay, which would be another point on the coordinate plane. But I like the uh, term ordered pair. Okay, so an ordered pair is a pair of numbers, the first being the first in the two, uh, the pair here, there's a specific order. The first is the x coordinate and the second is the y. So here, this one, I would go over one on the x axis and then seven on the y. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so here is roughly the uh, order pair or coordinate or point one seven. So we have one seven, we have the, this sketch of this line. So assuming I, you know, I'm working with a pretty accurate, you know, graph paper or whatnot, we can kind of at, you know, answer the question visually, right? So is the point one seven on the, on the line y equals three x minus five? Well, clearly not, right? This point is not on this line. So the answer is no, but now let's answer this question um, algebraically, okay? So let me kind of erase all this. So if you're with me so far, you're, that's excellent, okay? So what am I gonna do? Well, again, remember I said this is X and this is Y, okay? We're talking about an ordered pair. Well, if I plug in this X here, where this X is at in this equation, and this y value right here, okay, so this is one coordinate, one ordered pair. If I plug it into this particular equation, what I should get is that the left hand side of the, um, the left hand side of this equation should equal to the right hand side. It should balance like any equation, right, is an equal uh, sign here. So let's plug this in. So let me write this down here y equals 3x minus 1. So I'm going to replace the y with the 7. Okay, so that's seven. Then I'm gonna replace this x here with this one. So that's gonna be three times one minus, whoops, this should be five. Apologize about that. Always double checking your work. So this should be, that's minus five, right? So here we go. So I replace the y with, this, with the seven. I replace the x with the one. And I just wrote the original equation. And what I'm looking to see here, does this, does this point, when I plug it in for this, the respective x, y values, is it going to balance? Okay, so what do I get here? I get 7 equals 3 times 1 is 3, so 3 minus 5. Is that true? So 7 equals negative 2? Well, no. Okay, that's false. This is a false statement. So because this is false, all right, this when I plugged in these values here, because it didn't balance the equation, um, then this does not lie on that um, that line. It would be very much like this. If I give you an, an equation like x plus 1 equals um, 4, and I'm going to say, is x equals 9 the solution to this equation? So is x equals 9 the solution to this equation? Well, you would just replace this x with a 9, so you would have 9 plus 1. And we have to ask ourselves, does 9 plus 1, does the left-hand side, in fact, equal the right-hand side. No, 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 does not equal 4, so x equals 9 is not the solution to this equation. And this is the same kind of um, logic that we use to answer a question like this. 
So real basic algebra stuff, graphing lines, and there's much, much more that you're going to have to be proficient at. But, you know, this was a kind of a quick little review. We kind of hit uh, a few real important topics. Again, you know, uh, we can't turn this video into a complete full lesson on a lot of these important topics. That's what that's what I uh, encourage you to, you know, get yourself into a good study program and give yourself enough time, if you have the time, to, you know, study, practice, and just kind of brush off. You All the stuff that, you've, um, that you're going to need uh, for the MTL, Elementary Education Math Assessment, you've studied somewhere in your past, okay, in high school or in college, the majority of it for sure. You just <laughs> probably don't remember a lot of it, and that's completely normal. But you're going to have to de uh, certainly uh, brush up on your math to uh, get through this assessment with flying colors, and that was the... Uh, goal of this video. So let's go and wrap it up. So um, a couple uh, thoughts here. So again, if you want to check out my test prep course on this, the MTL Elementary Education Math Assessment, I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this uh, video. I've been on YouTube for like 12 years plus at the time of this video. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that can help you prepare and I think I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I think I have like 13 million total views and a lot of subscribers, well over 100,000, like 125, 126,000. I only say that because, um, you know, it just goes, you know, to, for me, my my passion for teaching math, okay? And when I started teaching and sharing videos and just doing tutorials and stuff, I, I just put, put so much information out there. I basically, I put things out there to help people. And I've been doing it for a long, long time. So I, I've really built up a significant amount of uh, math tutorials that, that can definitely benefit anyone. So check that out if that's something you want to check out. You can definitely subscribe or just check out my playlist, or you could take my, you know, um, uh, check out my full comprehensive course. That's my, my best work. Hey, if you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, is this your first time taking this exam? You'd be surprised that uh, it's not uncommon at all for teachers to have to take uh, certification assessments more than once, okay? So if this is your second time, you know, or even your third time, don't let that stop you, okay? Because there's a lot of people out there that, that have to, you know, um, you know, uh, retake exams, okay? It's, uh, I know for my um, uh, particular exam, I actually took the Praxis uh, exam for high school of math there's a, really a lot of mathematics on there and i have a degree in math and a master's degree and even then i found that it, like hey it was a challenging you know you have to study for these assessments so don't you know don't like oh yeah i'm good at math right kind of do that you know really do your best really like over prepare and you'll be better off um to do it but anyways uh, even on this particular exam i think the failure rate was I mean, something like 40, 50 percent of the people the first time out didn't make it uh, because they're challenging exams. OK, and and this particular assessment, even though you're not going to be teaching, you know, algebra, geometry at, at more advanced levels, you know, you're going to be expected to know a considerable amount. But overall, I think that's just going to make you a better teacher no matter what. OK, uh, so um, but that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education career. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.